Hi, I'm Kara O'Donnell, and this is County Board Wrap-Up, where we take a closer look at some of the actions taken by the Arlington County Board at its monthly meeting. Today, we're joined by County Board Chair Katie Crystal, as always, and this month, Board Member Libby Garvey will be joining her as well. Thank you both for being here today. Um, today, we're going to chat about the outcome of the General Assembly and the upcoming special session, the Westover Beer Garden, and a new public engagement guide for capital projects. But let's get started with an update on the fiscal 2019 budget process. Where do we stand after the March meeting? So our budget process generally runs from the end of February until budget adoption at the end of April. So we are right in the middle of it. We've got 11 budget work sessions, which we're engaged uh, in the thick of right now. Um, these are opportunities for board members to get deep in the weeds of the budget, ask staff questions. Um, this year, there are cuts on the table. Commercial real estate assessments came in lower than what we had anticipated, which meant that we had to find sources to cut from the budget. Um, so that means board members are bringing an added level of scrutiny to make sure that we really do understand uh, not only where those cuts might fall in terms of line items, but the potential impacts that they might have to our residents. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the work sessions. They've been going on as we speak pretty much that's with right. every individual department mm -hmm. throughout the county. Has, have you found anything that's been surprising? That's an interesting question. One of the things that's been really um, striking, I think, not necessarily tied to the work sessions, but in terms of the public communications we've had with folks, um, is, well, perhaps it's not surprising how much Arlingtonians have a passion for the programs that they enjoy. But you know, this is a budget where our manager and the department heads took great care to make sure that yeah, cuts did. really didn't reduce the services. Um, but, but one of the things that's been surprising is even if the impacts to the residents aren't, uh, there aren't felt res impacts to the residents, people are still very protective of their services. A great example um, is the 55 plus program, uh, which uh, presents an opportunity for those who participate in parks and recreation programs, our seniors, to go far and wide around the region and go on field trips and day trips. Um, one of the, the budgetary impacts or um, elements uh, is to contract out the, um, the bus services. It won't affect the number of programs, it won't affect the cost to residents, but people feel really attached to that program. They feel attached <laughs> yeah. to the driver of that bus. Yeah. And so we've yeah, so really heard from a lot of continuing, exactly. but yes. So. so we've heard from a lot of people in that regard. And so I think while we're, I'm not surprised by the passion, the, the level of protectiveness I think has yeah. been really striking. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, to me, the, the, that's not as striking because I'm kind of used to it. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, my 23rd budget. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you count the school board, but I actually have been somewhat surprised at there. There hasn't been more outcry about programs, and I think as yeah, I think as you set it up, it's why it's because the, they took a really great care in making cut. There wasn't a meat axe approach. It was really very careful mm -hmm. trying to protect um, the services and, and, and its effect on our, our residents as much as possible. And mm -hmm. I think that's paying off. Yeah. I think it's paying off. Well, I know we've had a lot of opportunities from the public, you know, different ways for them to engage in the process. Um, more so than we've had um, in previous years via social media, via chats, mm -hmm. via coming to the board meetings, but you know, Open so door many, Monday. yes, so <laughs> many different things. Are you seeing a, a wider variety of feedback as a result of that kind of thing? You know what I think has been striking this year with the roundtables, the huge number of people participating in Open Door Mondays, and then I think what we'll experience at the hearing on April 3rd at 7 p.m. if people would like to come in for the budget hearing, is there's more um, uh, cross-fertilization and more conversation happening. Um, I think in the past when we've done a lot of online engagement or letter writing engagement, you focus on the issue that matters to you, mm -hmm. and I think it's incredibly salient for um, you know, public safety personnel, for example, to be in a room when somebody maybe has come to advocate about Arlington Independent Media or the Shredder, for them to also mm -hmm. hear the concerns of our public safety personnel who are um, raising to our attention that their compensation maybe isn't keeping pace mm -hmm. with the region and therefore um, creating a uh, you know, large number of, of vacancies among their ranks. So there's this sort of um, uh, opportunity for folks to hear from one another about their priorities. Um, you know, although I think we always wish we were in a budget year where everything was expanding and growing, sure. <laughs> um, that nevertheless has been one of the positives, I think, coming out of mm -hmm. some of these new engagement mm -hmm. opportunities for people to hear how uh, different offsets and different programs affect different members mm -hmm. of the community. Yeah. And I might jump in here. One of the things um, our manager did, which more so than in, in the past, I think, is he did a little foreshadowing for the future. So if you read the manager's mm -hmm. note, which he did spend a lot of time on, so this is, a, this is not an easy budget year. Um, we always say they're hard, but this one really kind of is. Um, but I think we've been approaching it very well. 
Next year's going to be harder. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think we're going to have to have some really difficult conversations, mm -hmm. and we're kind of foreshadowing, talking about that. So this engagement now is really good, but we're, we're going to have to step it up. And so when we're done with this budget, we're not going to just like sit back and go, huh, mm -hmm. we can relax until next fall. I think we're going to start having time to start then talking well, about the next talk, year. Yeah, because I think we're going to have to do some real, you know, we're, there are too many perfect storms coming together. And yeah. Katie, you mentioned the, um, you know, what we're facing is the decline in the, the value of the commercial real mm -hmm. estate. Um, and that is what's happening in the office market nationwide. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to realize that's not going to come back. Mm -hmm. So while we've always been based on a 50-50, 50% with mm -hmm. our houses, our residents, uh, you know, who live here and 50% of the commercial, the businesses, and that's been a nice balance, that's probably going to change and more of the burden is going to have to fall um, on, our, on, on our, yeah, on residential for a while. Mm -hmm. So we have some, state, well, there are going to be some real conversations coming forward, but I think we're going to be ready for it. Yeah. Now, um, we've talked about how the manager presents the budget to all of you, you go through the hearing process and the analysis. How much leeway does the board have, just to give folks a little context, to make changes to what the manager has proposed to, um, you know, change a whole program or Absolutely. what have you that's on the table? <laughs> that's a great question, Kara. So we have set the box. We act pretty soon to advertise a tax rate, um, uh, which we did uh, last month in March. Within that, um, as long as we find offsets for any ads, um, uh, we can really start from scratch with this budget. I think people generally don't see us do that in part because we respect the professional expertise of the manager and it staff. It wouldn't be wise. It would, probably wouldn't be wise. <laughs> it wouldn't be um, wise. But it is our job to channel the community's priorities. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what might be most uh, um, cost effective, for example, may sometimes come in a conflict with what the, the community might value. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the manager often takes a hard look, and we appreciate this very much, at other jurisdictions, right? benchmarking us. Um, there are some ways in which Arlington wants to be in line with fellow jurisdictions. Public safety pay is a great example. Mm -hmm. When we're not in line, that has consequences. Yeah. But there are some others. There may be programs, legacy programs that are unique that have um, a, a, a huge um, uh, number of people who champion and love them in Arlington, and in that way we might be interested in being different from other jurisdictions, and that's possibly mm -hmm. where the board yeah. comes in. Yeah, and I think we're having that discussion particularly with AIM, and then if I can just, a small example, and I don't know where we're going to end up, or even quite where I'm going to end up yet, the shredder. The shredder is a very small amount of money, and you know, our staff did some look at, more people in Arlington by just, you know, multiples come and use that, and I realize, I think in part, it's more than just a shredder. <laughs> And you know we need to kind of think about that. Is some of the things that make Arlington the community it is. It's a people get together and they talk. They talk about standing in line. But I think actually people kind of like to visit with each other to some extent. So that's something I think we need to look at. It's it's not a lot of money, um, and it may be providing some benefits that go way beyond shredding. Is what I was trying to say. It becomes a community event. Yeah, almost. yeah, perhaps. So it's, that's an interesting one, which I haven't finished looking at, but it's really interesting. And we were talking about, you know, the transparency, the engagement mm -hmm. with the community. Is this something that's unique to Arlington or is this something we see in other communities to the level that we that we do it? What a good question. I don't, I, none of us have been county board members in other communities. Yeah. I think, you know, especially we look at our peer jurisdictions in Northern Virginia and we all have an opportunity to interact with our counterparts mm -hmm. in Loudoun and Fairfax mm -hmm. and Alexandria and beyond. Um, you know, this is an incredibly highly educated population that has very high expectations of their government. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that we're um, any more or less than any other jurisdiction, but, you know, I would say, especially when it comes to the budget, I really do think that I can honestly look Arlingtonians in the eye and say that this is an incredibly transparent process. Yeah, right. All of our deliberations are broadcast with closed captioning. Um, uh, they are available and preserved, so people can go back and look at them online, budget.arlingtonva.us. You can see all of them there. Um, we strive to be out in the community and hearing from people and provide many opportunities for folks to weigh in. Yeah. It's really important to us that people feel like this is their budget too. Right. And although we cannot meet everybody's requests and satisfy every need, um, we do want everyone who participates to feel heard and respected. Yeah, because that's who we're representing. That's who we work for. Exactly. You know, I, and I would say, because I've been at this sort of a long time and have done you know, some national conferences, I think we do do far more than most places. Sometimes when we've gone and I've described, you know, on the school side, it's, it's ACI, and here we have all of our commissions. A lot of times people are just like, what? Wow. And that really helps so that they just find themselves funny, running into problems because they really don't have that kind of way for people mm -hmm. to, to do inputs. And I was told, I don't know if it's apocryphal, but one of our staff who was in Fairfax one time when we were doing boundary changes, which we do a lot of, said, 
we just get a letter in the mail saying where our kids are going to school the next day. There's, there's no, there's, <laughs> there's no and process. I'm, and there's right. no process. And I was like, whoa. So I don't know if that's exactly how they do it, <laughs> but I think we probably do far more, really probably in every department. Um, not to say we're perfect, we can't get better, because I don't, we, you know, we're not There's sort always. of bragging, yeah. But I do think we do do more than a lot of places. And I think the level of engagement from the community, you, you referenced this mm -hmm. earlier, that you know our community is very invested personally mm -hmm. in what in all of the details. Well, this is of an educated process. community, mm -hmm. and actually, you think about it, think of all the people who have government jobs. Absolutely. So this is what this is what we do. This is what they do for yes. a living. Yes, <laughs> yes. So they totally understand how this works, and they want to be part of it. And I think that's yeah. great. It mm -hmm. gets a little bumpy sometimes. But yeah, it's right. Great. Well, and then speaking of, you mentioned the hearing on April third. Are there additional opportunities for folks to let their voices be heard before the April meeting when the budget will be adopted? Absolutely. So we have. Um, uh, a budget hearing on April 3rd at 7 p.m. in the boardroom, and then we have a tax rate hearing uh, uh, on April 5th at the same time, 7 p.m., two nights later. Um, you know, people generally, especially when you're looking at having to make cuts, we tend to hear more from people about what they'd like to save or add. We know there are a lot of Arlingtonians who might like to come and make the case that their property taxes should be lower. Um, and so we provide a forum for people to, to uh, make that case as well on April 5th at 7 p.m. Um, you know, you can continue to go again, budget.arlingtonva.us, find a number of online forums. You'll find also there are email addresses as board members. You're welcome to write us. We've been receiving a great many emails um, on the budget. We'd read all of them uh, and, uh, and, and strive to follow up to the extent that we can. Um, and uh, Open Door Mondays will mm -hmm. remain through the budget process. If you go to arlingtonva.us and search Open Door, um, you'll find the, the list of dates. and. Um, you know, we look forward to continuing to engage with people right up until we adopt a budget on April 22nd. Okay. And then, as I said, oh, excuse me, April 21st. 21st, yeah, yeah. 21st yeah. yes. Yeah. And then we'll be Don't come to the boardroom on April 22nd. <laughs> we will not be well, you will not be lonely. Well, you come, but you won't find much. <laughs> um, well, it makes a, a nice segue because, of course, Arlington is not the only one going through the budget process. Or the legislature is as well in Richmond. Um, they wrapped up the regular session on March 10th. What does it mean for Arlington? Mm -hmm. Uh, so some of it is known and some of it is unknown with regard to how this will have an impact on Arlington. The General Assembly passed uh, about 1,800 bills, defeated about 1,600 bills. It was a whirlwind of activity. Unfortunately, among the things they did not pass was a budget. Um, and so uh, the conversation continues. We do not yet have a biennial budget for fiscal year 19 or 20. Um, so there is some uh, legislative um, uh, dosy doing yet to remain. The governor just handed back down his recommended budget. Um, somewhat unsurprisingly, it, it more or less matches with the outgoing governor proposed. Okay. Um, and so uh, it is back then with between the two houses of the General Assembly um, to, to try to ascertain their priorities and uh, the policy measures they want to take as part of this biennial budget. The big difference between those two budgets, of course, um, uh, are, are Medicaid expansion. The House passed it, the Senate didn't, and that creates a pretty significant gap uh, between the two proposed biennial budgets. So um, it's caused a lot of acrimony, actually, even within the majority party um, between the House and the Senate uh, about how they'd like to handle it moving forward. So so uh, the General Assembly will reconvene on April 18. Um, it's certainly uh, a hope of all of us as stakeholders in the biennial budget of the Commonwealth of Virginia that that can be brought to resolution. Um, the worst case scenario would be no budget uh, at the start of the fiscal 19 year in July. Um, the governor has assured us that you know, he does maintain the authority um, to keep schools and other basic okay. functions open. Um, so he will exercise that authority. But we remain hopeful it won't get to that. And our, as the esteemed senators and delegates who represent us will be able to come to a compromise well before then. And of course, the big question um, that we've all been talking about for months now is that dedicated metro funding. Indeed. Where does that stand at this point? So let's start with the good news. <laughs> the okay. General Assembly took the unprecedented action of passing in both houses um, legislation that committed $154 million of funding to Metro Capital, which is, again, the first time we have seen this in Metro's history. Say, this is really historic. It's big news. It's yeah. a recognition that that amount of money is needed and that Metro is essential to the future of the Commonwealth. It also provides us an opportunity um, to go to the other partners, the District of Maryland and Mar uh, the District of Columbia and Maryland, um, and then ultimately we hope the federal government to seek a match. Um, this is money that will help keep Metro in a state of good repair and shore up this system. Which was the bad that's the good news. news. Um, the bad, bad news, other side of the bad coin. news is where that one hundred and fifty-four yeah. million dollars okay. comes yeah. from. So. Um, 
Unfortunately, it is almost all done on the backs of Northern Virginia. You know, it sort of was intended to be a state funding solution. There's very little state money um, in what came out of the conference bill. Um, the upshot, I'll try to stay out of the weeds of kind of the sources of funding. Um, some of uh, the folks in our Arlington community have probably seen some of the news media coverage talking about how this comes at the expense of other roads and transportation mm -hmm. projects. And the reason why is that that money comes from the Northern Virginia uh, Transportation Authority or NVTA. Um, so NVTA loses pretty significant, pretty significantly, um, and just to give you a, a flavor of what that means for Arlington, we would stand to lose um, about $4.5 million annually in funding for transportation projects, including roads, um, transit, bus, uh, beyond. And on top of that, have to pay an additional $8 million as part of this kind of, quote, state okay funding solution. That is on top of the $75 million annually that we pay in operating money to Metro. So wow. we went to the state yeah. because we couldn't pay any more in. We were paying quite a bit. Metro is incredibly important to us, and that's reflected in the amount that we budget to them, but we had reached our breaking point. Mm -hmm. So for the state to say uh, our solution is that you pay more is a little bit of a non-starter, or a lot of a oh, non-starter. Yeah. Particularly so, when they take credit for it. <laughs> So from here, we're working very hard to get the governor to amend uh, the two okay. bills that came out of conference. Um, we are working largely through the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority and the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission, on which both Libby and I sit. I chair the legislative body. Um, we're really seeking to line up our voices with those of the rest of the region. It's so important that this not be Arlington wants one thing, Fairfax, Prince yeah. William want another. Yeah. We're speaking um, with a united voice, along actually with the Northern Virginia business yeah. community, who's been an incredibly important player. Yeah, I, I've been impressed at how united everybody is, mm -hmm. uh, which is really good. And we should mention our, our colleague Christian Dorsey, who mm -hmm. just does yeoman's duty on, on, on the, the Metro, Metro Board and board. On, on NVTC with us. Um, you know, one, one of the things to put in perspective, which, um, and I think why we got at least as far as we have, is this is sort of the, what they call the economic engine for Northern Virginia. We really Absolutely. need this for our economy. Our economy provides more than half of the revenue to the state. You know, there's the whole state of Virginia, over half the revenue comes from Northern Virginia. Virginia. There, we're all dependent on Metro, and hopefully that message will get through a there little was more. Because they can't break our backs, so we're not going to yeah, be able to do that. Yeah, there was a great study, actually, that the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission did uh, last year, which I think I've touted before on County Board Wrap Up, but it's a great piece of work that essentially modeled the economic activity that's supported by Metro Rail and VRE, um, and how much that would have to be diminished without oh those goodness. two transit systems. Mm -hmm. uh, came to the figure of $600 million a year annually to the Commonwealth. So that's not Let property alone, taxes right, to Northern right, Virginia, right, that's right. to the Commonwealth. And so, you know, this is our point, is that uh, a relatively small amount of investment from the state um, will go a very long way in terms of their return. Yeah. Well, let's hopefully they will hear the wisdom. Exactly. Yes. yes. We're, we're and trying to share see, that. See the ways. And the governor has, I should say, he and his team have committed to amending the bill. So they, okay. they are very much at the table. Um, and the question, of course, is what kind of amendments can then be sustained when they go back to the General Assembly. Sense. And so far, I think the governor has a good working relationship with the General Assembly, pretty much, I think. And that's because he came out of that. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important. All right. It's well, a we great will wait and see. Um, and at this point, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll talk increased outdoor seating and more hours of piped entertainment for the Westover Beer Garden. Stay with us. Welcome back to County Board Wrap Up, where each month we walk you through some of the decisions the board takes at its monthly meeting. Today, with the help of County Board Chair Katie Crystal and Board Member Libby Garvey. Thank you both once again for being here. Now, let's talk some of the action taken with the Westover Beer Garden. Obviously, a longtime neighborhood favorite. Everybody knows the Westover Beer Garden. Um, but they ha came to the board with a request. Let's talk about that. Indeed, they did. So this actually started last year. Um, the Westover Beer Garden was looking to greatly expand the number of outdoor seats, in particular, that they had. Um, this is, as you alluded to, a well-loved community gem. Mm -hmm. There is something about being outdoors that just seems to facilitate this sense of community. Yeah. And uh, not the beer, only, the beer probably helps. The beer probably <laughs> and food, and food. It doesn't hurt. Anyway. And the dogs and, and children. Yes, and some the really children. lovely yeah. stories yeah. Uh, at our hearing on yeah. Tuesday. So. Um, 
we uh, were very interested in the idea of expanding outdoor seating for them. We ran into an obstacle, which was our zoning ordinance, actually. Um, the Westover Beer Garden is located in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So whereas we have the flexibility <laughs> to increase the number of outdoor seats um, relative to the number of indoor seats uh, in our more urban areas, the Roslyn to Boston corridor, sure. the Route 1 corridor, um, the county board actually didn't have that authority under our zoning ordinance for Westover. So because this was so important, um, our hardworking county staff actually undertook a zoning ordinance amendment to give us the flexibility. And so Tuesday night was about exercising that facility, that, that flexibility. And we actually went up to 102 seats, um, or the number of seats uh, allowed under the certificate of occupancy, whichever okay. is fewer. Yeah, because we're not really quite sure yet. About what, what the CO what, will what allow. Is, yeah, what the certificate but, of occupancy will allow. Yeah, yeah. so, um, uh, you know, it's, it, it should uh, help Westover Garden, Beer Garden, come in kind of legally uh, with the appropriate approvals to really continue to, to create and foster that sort of outdoor space that really um, is beloved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was struck um, by a couple of things. One, I'm, one, this is what we, we do so much of this where it's an out, you know, there, there's this neighborhood play everybody likes and it gets, it creates noise. Mm -hmm. So the immediate neighbors are upset about the noise. And as you know, we become more urban, this is, it's a constant sort of balance to keep it sure. right. I was going to say conflict. Yeah, it's a conflict, but we try to balance it out. And then as I remarked in the meeting, I was really struck though by how um, how very civil the the public mm. hearing was. It was nice. just, it was very heartwarming is what I call it. People coming and talking about what it means to their dogs, their kids, the neighborhood, people met, somebody met their wife there. I, think. <laughs> I mean, it was just delightful. There were a few people coming to be upset about the noise. Nobody hissed, nobody booed, yeah. nobody, it was, you really felt it was a community that it, you could have different views and everybody cared about each other and okay. was committed to the neighborhood. And okay. that was lovely to see and that's, you know, we see that a fair amount in Arlington and um, I hope more and more because that's what makes us what we are, which is a wonderful place. Yeah. yeah. And as Libby was alluding to, there are some ongoing differences. Generally, um, the, the additional seating was pretty widely supported. Okay. There are some concerns about the, the music and mm -hmm. the, we know the proprietors of West River Beer Garden would have loved the opportunity to expand the number of nights they can offer live music. Um, we did expand the number of nights in which they can they can do piped in music or play a sports game on oh, the patio, okay. for example. Um, but we did not at this time expand the, the number of nights where live music was allowed. Out of recognition that there are changes coming, we've got some folks in the neighborhood who are having trouble sleeping on the nights of the live music already. So we'll keep balancing it um, and we'll have another bite of the apple. They'll come back for renewal of that permit in October. Okay. Um, and so we can see how it's working and, and maybe consider the, the live music request then. Okay, so we'll yeah. see what happens for there. I mean, do the neighbors have recourse if the conditions aren't followed? How does that all work? Oh, that was a subject of pretty, um, <laughs> yeah. pretty extensive conversation. And and one of the things that's challenging actually for folks in, across Arlington is, um, you know, kind of trying to navigate that, what their rights are when music is allowed and disallowed. Um, so we've talked a lot about wanting to make sure that our police, because usually these are after hours, so you can always call code enforcement, um, but they, they do keep somewhat regular business hours. Sure. So after hours, you call the police non-emergency line. Non-emergency. Non Very important, right? Call 911. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they can come out and they can. And they will come out. And they will come yeah. out. And if they're in violation um, you know, of certain behaviors, uh, that they, they can take actions and issue citations. But um, it is a little bit that challenge of, um, you know, oh my goodness, are, is this piped in music and what hours are those allowed? Is it live music and what hours are those allowed? So one of the things we actually did put in as a site plan condition was um, asking that the, that the information be clearly posted about what's allowed and when, and contact information for the appropriate person at the Westover Beer Garden constantly be, be posted and updated to reflect the person on duty. Mm -hmm. We hope, uh, given the collegiality in the neighborhood, people right. can continue to work yeah. it out directly. Yeah, ideally, if somebody has a problem, they just go and talk to somebody at the Westover. We, we don't even have to bring in the police, and they right. just work that's it out themselves. Yeah. And I, th I think that's been happening more and more, so it's good. Okay. Well. Yeah. Changing gears a little, as we alluded to the extensive public engagement mm. and transparency that Arlington is very proud of um, in its processes. And the county's director of communications and public engagement has presented a new civic engagement on capital projects to the board. What would you say are the key elements? And let's talk a little bit about this plan. I think making clear what are the steps in the engagement process because what we, we and we had some discussion about this because a lot of times no matter what we do somebody because you didn't tell us or you're hiding this information and there's often com confusion about what's really going on so there were four steps that you put so first is to communicate and that's what we do a lot that is so for example if there, there are potholes in your street and they're getting filled you get a flyer you get something that's saying 
we're going to fill these potholes. And that's the extent, really, of the engagement. We don't need to have a whole process to decide whether or not we're going to repair the streets. Um, but after that, then you have, and I'm just checking my notes, make sure I get it right, consult. So that's to keep the community you know, in informed and reach out and get, some, and get some information back, but not all that much. The next one is to really involve people and bring them together. Um, and that is a much is again a higher higher step, and you get some designs developed, and you really the people say we like this one, you don't like that one, can you make this more this really working and collaboration, um, which is really just to, again to work together. And it's really important that people understand where we are. So because sometimes people say, well, you didn't ask me. Well, this was we're just communicating. This isn't right. something because there are people who actually do think we maybe should ask them if we if we're to fill the potholes in the street. But I, I, you know, we we go back and forth. Um, so I think sometimes what happens is we get upset, we get community upset because people aren't clear about what, what step we're in. Also, our staff, we weren't always ourselves clear about what level of engagement we should have. So we're putting in a structure, so bef before a project even happens, they're going to work out the communication plan and which level should be involved, and that'll get reviewed. Um, and on particularly um, important large programs, they'll probably come to the board and we may even discuss and say, wait a minute, now, I think you need to involve people a little more here. Um, or, yeah, no, that looks good, and it'll be out there for people to know about. Um, and then finally, but just, we've got these little design kind of logos that represent each of these four steps, and we're going to see about trying to put those like on all of our, if you go to a meeting and there's an agenda, it's going to tell you what level this is. So, you know, this is where we're really just informing you and we want some information back, but we're not deciding on design, you know, just to make it really clear about what it is we're doing. And then finally, not only the communications plan, but somewhat being clear about what is everybody's role. Sometimes we have groups that get together and they do a lot of work, which we really appreciate, and they will come to the board and advise the board. Mm -hmm. And often they feel if they all think it should go one way, well, the board, of course, is going to do what they decided. But of course, the board brings in other information. Sure. A key one sometimes is money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the community comes up, this is our favorite, this is absolutely what we need to do, but it costs too much. So then it's our job to figure out what's filter the next, to process, filter right. through and get back. And people will go, but we decided. And that is just, <laughs> no, not quite. So anyway, and I think it will continue to, you know, it's, I said it was going to be bumpy for a while. I think we will work on clarifying it and, and work it actually for ourselves too. Um, but it will, I think, structure the conversation in a very healthy way. So we'll be clear about what exactly it is we're discussing and what it is we're not discussing. Okay. Um, because sometimes people start arguing, <laughs> they're arguing two different subjects. People get really passionate and yelling at each other and they're talking about one thing and they're talking about something else. And it's bad enough when we all know what we're talking about and <laughs> talking about the same thing. puts everybody singing the from same, the same sheet of music. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And the harmonies might not be perfect. But, um, so I think, it, I think it's a big step. I yes. think it's a big, big step. You know, we started out talking about the amount of community engagement in this community. And I've often said it's, it's our greatest strength. And it can be our greatest weakness if we don't use it well. And this is a way of just helping everybody use it well and, and make it really be productive. All right. Well, on that note, that brings us to the end of another county board wrap-up. Thank you for joining us today for some of the behind-the-scenes information on decisions the board took at its March board meeting. And obviously, thank you, Katie and Libby, for giving us some insight into the board's decisions. Next month, we're going to be talking about the board's adoption of the fiscal year 2019 budget and other issues the board will tackle at its April meeting. You can watch the county board meetings live streamed or archived on our website, arlingtonva.us. Just search county board. And remember to tell us what you think about these issues and more by going to topics.arlingtonva.us engage. I'm Kara O'Donnell, and I'll see you next month on County Board Wrap-Up.